So after the copying the applications, then we can deploy the application. We can go to the the directory that we are we are in our our so our our configuration files is there. So uh, we are in this. This is the directory we are in. So so you send simply uh, we we simply simply Docker Docker build uh, out of the Docker files. You can build and then you can tag it like this and then just simply copy and the e tag imaging the tag and the tag and then. You can then we are root directory you just put it like the semicolon with the tag information we just hit this everyone and it's just created the 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 images that we need so we already created the image you see you created the image like this the less than one minute ago uh, we created the image docker images to so one dot two dot same as it has names and then so on so forth and then exactly the same image we define into the docker compose files also if i go to the docker compose files again you see the exactly the same at uh, the docker image the 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 doc file names and the tag numbers and if you run it again it will be the sense overwriting the same uh, same images that you you have it in here so we can also run it again doesn't matter because the image is there already created and so just you know, overwriting the image it doesn't mean if it's there existing there as you see the image is created it's take the base image base java 8 and then it's take the the image it created image and map that into the docker container you see the docker in the docker desktop you see the docker terms because it's the same versions and same nothing to change it's a 20 28 minutes ago it's created uh, properly so this uh, the docker image created that's we, we are expecting here the docker image creation and then uh, then after the image creation is done then we simply simply start the docker uh, simply start the uh, docker compose up so we already did docker compose up uh, maybe we can uh, we can stop the application again uh, maybe there's a possibility to run the docker compose again so let's go back to the stop the applications uh maybe we can we can quit uh, the database connectivity because i running the cli so maybe we can uh, stop uh, we where the applications so let's have a check so you see the core application we stop the control alter c stopping the the containers you can cli and then we can see the docker pss process is running is any process running so the nothing is there so we can also remove uh, the the container you see that we can also the possibility to manually with the help of the uh, docker desktop tools i found really good tools to to visually work with the docker compose uh, with the docker De uh, docker docker desktop tools it's really good tools we use the professional life every day the docker desktop tools so we see the the application uh, with the deployments uh, now we can we are in the in the sorry uh, here so we can run the docker compose again uh, run the interact and uh, so we can dot the docker up so the docker compose up and it's this it's, it has to be running the application this is the created the daughter database and uh, the connectivity the the service creation with the post -gis database back in server and then it is done and then creating the spring boot application container and then it's running the what we are expecting the user dv registration is checking that this system is running or not is the database getting ready so the system is already ready to accept the connections is a dev environment we are running applications and then so on so so on so forth so it's, it's, it's all the all the development environments so if you just simply change the development environment even you can go to the the changing the the which environment you are so it's a development you can write down productions or test or qe that's i say this is really flexible to to to, to externally configure your uh, spring boot application with uh, with any many sql database postgis or mysql oracle doesn't matter it is like up to independent any sql based database so compose is running so you see the application is running the container is running with the, all the docker compose files you see uh, that the name of the files automatically created and is your application spring boot application is running 20 port 2021 and then the your default database running is 24432 
and this is the default port of the, uh, the Spring Boot applications. So then we can check it the uh, Docker Docker images. That's we are again to check it Docker images, and you see uh, the, all the images of the Docker that we have with the Docker images 26 minutes ago. We created Docker images and all the version that we have in the Postgres database 9.6 alpha alpha version that you are using, and also we can check it like the Docker processes. We see the Docker processes. We have two processes running. When the one process is database process, one of the process is Spring Boot application process. So let's check uh, Docker Docker exec uh, to to uh, to see the the database level uh, uh, database levels to uh, to the uh, to how it is the, the plotted. Uh, it is noted. So uh, to and then. We have the uh, PSQL, PS, PS, PSQL, the, the user post, uh, post case, and then we can see that we are in the, in the database level as a, as a PSQL clients, and then we can see that is there any any tables. You see the all the tables, and then, and then we can we can check it out all the migrations properly coming. And then we can check it the migration, all the four migration. Okay, four version, five version is there. So everything is perfectly handled. So we can see, and also we can check if any record is there. Database level, oh, there's that was a record. You see, only one record is there. Even though we can check it like the role uh, is, is any role is defined in database levels. So and then we can say the nothing role is defined. So let's application is running, all things is there properly working. Then we can go back to the postman to do some testing. So we see the actuator we are running the actuator. So application we already plotted or those are new into the global setting of the postman. Just you need to be simply change the IP address and then port number where you try to install the applications. Just follow the previous channel. I already discussed about how can you do it. So application is properly handled, properly running. That's we are expecting. And then you get the Swagger UI documentation also. I had a discussion long screencast about how can you install the config and the Schwager UI stops is this if everything is properly handles so we can go there so it's a Schwager UI that's we are running so as you see the Schwager we are replication local host and then the 2021 and the, all the Schwager UI is properly handled all annotations and all services then that's this you know, previously it was we are deploying the application in the uh, uh, in, the, in the Kubernetes and deployment, it's the same thing, same configuration with the application deployment with the Kubernetes, with the Docker and Kubernetes. I will continue that one. So just now is the is the Docker and Docker Compose based deployment. It's exactly the same picture. We will do the the Docker and Docker Compose based deployments. That's my 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 plan by my intention. So. That means we do that postman, so we see that everything is there properly coming with the postman checked. All the UI it has parameters, it has a in, in to input output, it has a URL, the, the complete path of the your REST API calls, and so on and so forth. So if, it's the, if I check that any data is there, so it has a get methods, you can check it get methods, and, and what's wrong? Uh, checking so you see the record is coming so it's only one record that I saw into the back end level so only record one record is there that's the record we are coming we are testing so you see the only one record we can do the one test with the postman's let's go back so we can see the installations and the check so this is the port okay perfect we have a URL definition that we define into the our controller so let's let's look at the controller levels. So how the controller definition is see the base API user registration and the base URL and that's with the base URL that's we define it here the, the IP address IP address and port number and API and then so on and so forth. So we can hit. So <clears throat> so you see the two uh, two zero one and two zero two. So this is perfectly working. So 203. So now we can check it in the in the in the database level. Is it the properly properly coming into the backend? So we see the 201, 202, and 203 properly mapped or properly getting. So let's let's create uh, one one user registrations with the uh, the 
202 for creating from roles uh, the roles the role definitions so it's 101 100 101 102 and then 2023 create role registrations exactly and then let's check it is the properly our our endpoints is working properly so so you see the is it 202 is connected it has a th four roles it says, has, 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 i didn't have any time to typing it just it has a four role created and it belongs to the belongs to the each user this user user number 2202 so let's let's do the same test with the postman so that means why we did the postman's which if your company is using the postman's you do the really professional structure that's i said that's you can export the your test cases the testing department or, or is, is web development team just import the test cases and change the only the only the only the only the ip address and port number where you install the your application our your, your raster base says that just and then after that they just simply uh, test all all your test cases that's you have it in the development environment or uk use side so they can also if the company is not interested to use the postman then we have a swagger ui that's we already configured as a professional way so we can go to the swagger ui that's we we have in this application so to zero to the running running applications and then we can go to the one of the creation of the maybe we can create the one more new user and try out it has all the definition how can you execute or let's say we copy paste one of the tests that we did in the in the in the, in the postman so uh, control all copy very straightforward and then we just simply change all the values and then execute it <clears throat> so you see that uh, 204 i can see five six and then so on so forth so five six seven so then it has all the tests that we we were expecting and then we have a five and six maybe you can create the one user uh, uh, user role and then maybe you want try out and then 205 uh, maybe there five is there i believe there is the five <coughs> five then control c then we can go to this this in same cases uh, with a roll fives and execute five or if it's not there then it's just throw the exemption is roll five there so 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 we can go to the right cross check is the if the test is working so is a previously it was 200 uh, 202 and then the 206 it has only the user registration and even though our 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 role our user is which just says 205 and 206 there so everything is properly launched to the to the to the to the to the database this that means you have with all the possibility to, to check uh, the you, you test your REST API documentation with the Swagger UI, Open API 3, and proper proper way to handle these things. And this is the additional information in the Swagger 3. You can also get the really clean view about your models, what you define your, your, your REST models. And then other program, and maybe your program C++ or Python, they then need to be very just take this information, these models to transform their programming language or the any 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 JavaScript, maybe TypeScript based programming language. They can web developer can take these models and build very quickly and run the test. You what you have the API levels. So that means it is the way how we can handle, how can you communicate, how can you do this there. And the deployment process that means we did the deployment process with the with the with the with the standalone jarvis deployment the previous screencast and uh, and now we did the deployment process with the docker docker and docker compose based deployments and then uh, finally we do the deployment process uh, with the with the docker and kubernetes based deployment just follow the channels i believe it is really professional way how can you handle those deployment process really proper way how can you handle those deployment process with the proper testing tool with the proper testing way proper testing tools like postman's and swagger ua itself and also the proper database migration tools like uh, the flyway 
or leaky waste with I magazine. So I cover all the parts that I believe it's helped you really a lot into the, your professional or your professional career in the development careers. So you follow the channels, subscribe the channel, write down your idea, your concept. Maybe that's help us really more to, to make, uh, make, make, help us, help our, uh, improve our knowledge. And I believe it's help also your knowledge to how can you professionally work and how you can DJ that really good developer or good as a DevOps engineers, or it doesn't matter how you, you, you call it as a software engineer. So I believe that's really helpful. Now I say bye-bye, goodbye, and see you later.